Hello everyone. In this geography skills based video, we're going to be looking at how to calculate bearings. This is a map skill and it's extremely useful on any examination where you have a practical element, uh, for example, the GCSE CIE paper and some of the A-level papers as well. When using bearings, there are a few things you need to know first. A bearing actually tells us a direction. So when you're looking at a bearing on a map, you're looking at a direction that you're going. It's a lot more accurate than a compass point. Whereas a compass point only tells you, for example, northeast, uh, the bearing can tell you exactly the precise northeast direction that you're going to be going in. In addition to this, um, when you're measuring a bearing, you have to always start from the north and go around clockwise for you to get an accurate measurement. Over here you can see approximately what these bearings mean, especially compared to the matching compass points. For example, a northeast is approximately uh, 45 degrees, east 90 degrees, south 180, west 270, and north is actually zero degrees. And uh, if you would fill in all the gaps, you can go down to a very, very precise direction. Now, for example, if you have two points, as you can see on the slide, point A and point B, and uh, you want to find the bearing from these two points, it's extremely important to read the question carefully and to figure out which is the starting point and which is the destination. For example, the bearing of A to B would be completely different from the bearing of B to A. So when it comes to measuring these bearings and you wanting to find the exact degrees, there is a certain procedure you need to follow. We are going on this diagram from point A to point B. The first thing you need to do is you need to draw a north line. Uh, the north line is a point leading from the point of origin, A in this case, directly north um, to zero degrees. After we've drawn the north line, you then need to connect the two points, the A and the B, and draw a line connecting them. You then measure the angle between the north line and the line that connects A to B, and this is your bearing. It is important to be very precise when calculating these bearings. So what you need to do is when you've done all the points that I mentioned in the previous slide, you take your protractor, you make sure that the center of the protractor is exactly on the point um, where the north line intersects the line connecting the A and B point. You make sure the zero, the beginning point of your protractor is on the north line, and then you measure the angle round. And you can see over here that the angle is just a little bit shy of 135 degrees. That gives us a bearing of approximately uh, southeast, or more precisely, 135 degrees. I mentioned previously that if you're looking at a bearing, it's very important to know the starting point. While these are exactly the same lines, the A and B, but this time, if I say I want you to find the bearing from B to A, notice we do it a little bit differently, and the result is definitely not going to be 135 degrees. So you follow the same procedure again. You draw a north line from the starting point, this case being B, and then you connect the uh, B to the A, and you want to measure clockwise going around the angle from the north line all the way to the line that connects the two points. However, in this instance, you'll notice that when you place your protractor uh, to measure these lines, you'll notice that the angle exceeds 180 degrees, and therefore you have to do something a little bit different. In this instance, you're left with uh, two different options. You can measure the angle again going clockwise, and you'll find out that the angle is 135 degrees. And then you have to remember that the angle has already exceeded 180 degrees. So it's 135 
plus 180 makes 315 degrees. Or alternatively, if you're very confident, uh, you can work this out faster. And what you do is you measure any angle that exceeds 180 degrees. You measure it counterclockwise. But if you measure it counterclockwise, you're not adding to the 180 degrees. You minus it away from the total angle of the circle, 360 degrees, which will give you exactly the same result. So we can see here, if we measure counterclockwise, um, we will measure 45 degrees. And therefore, if we take away 45 degrees from 360, we're left with 315 degrees again. Whichever way you prefer to do it, um, we'll find the same result. You just have to remember, be precise, find your starting point, and then your point of destination. Draw your north line, connect the lines together, and then work out uh, what the angle is using a protractor. This uh, calculating bearings is actually quite an easy skill. It tends to trip a lot of people up, but um, once you actually master it and you figure out the different stages, um, it's very easy points for you to get in your examination. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you found it useful, please like the video. And if you'd like to see more content, uh, subscribe for future geography videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a really great day.